Neath registered their first try after eight minutes. It started with good work by fullback Jonathan Griffiths, who switched the direction of play. It was taken on by Alan Bateman in his first game for the Welsh All Blacks, and he gave flanker Lynn Jones the scoring pass. It was the first of 11 tries, so how pleased was the Neath team manager Ron Waldron with his size performance this afternoon? Reasonably pleased, you know, we've got uh, the hardest part of the season to come, I think. We're 30 games away, I think, from the All Blacks, so we still got a lot of work to do. You know, the challenge is there, the challenge of winning the merit, and the challenge of doing reasonably well in the... In the the cup competition, so the challenges are there for us, and it's up for us to uh, see what we can do about it. You're a hard man to please. You, you never seem totally satisfied with a win. Well, having watched that game today, we made so many mistakes. You know, when if you play sides like New Zealand or whatever, you, you know, you're going to give a lot of lot of tries away. It is good to see our players out there today attempting, you know. Not uh, crazy things, but attempting to do things which are out of the ordinary and uh, having the confidence to attempt these things, and they did rather well. Errors are made, I know, and we have to become a little bit more disciplined in our objectives. Invariably, through the season, now forwards have played well and the backs have dropped their performance. Uh, a couple of games over the past few weeks, the forwards have played well, three quarters have dropped their performance. But today, there was a uh, I thought a better all-round performance from uh, the 15 players, but there were basic mistakes made at, uh, on both fronts. Except for the opposition, this is something. <laughs> plenty of tries. Uh, yeah, good plenty of things. Watch. Plenty yeah. of things to applaud. Uh, oh yes. Any yes. other tries in particular you were happy with? Well, I was highly delighted with uh, Chris Higgs's try in the right-hand corner down here. I thought that was. Uh, beautiful try for a wing to score, something of a, a Gerald Davis type wing, inside, outside, and uh, it gives us a lot of pleasure when we see three quarters moving in that man. You know, every try is a good try because it puts you that much ahead of your opposition and uh, it always requires a great effort to get there and I thought uh, there were some good performances out there, yeah, although we still got a long way to go on our disciplines. You're playing with three flankers in the back row. You must be particularly happy with the way they went. Did you anticipate the forwards going as well as they did? Well, no, not as well as they, as it turned out. I thought we would have been struggling a little bit more because um, you play in a Gwent Valley side and they play, tend to play quite a close, rugged type game. But uh, fortunately, uh, our trio did rather well today. And uh, if they continue to play in that manner, then we'll have a good job to do in selection. Again, last 20 minutes, uh, the boys started to pile the pressure on Neighbourville. Their heads dropped and more points came in that period. Mm. Well, probably, you know, it's all to do with confidence and things starting to gel and they feel they can really turn the screw. And uh, this is how things happen. You know, when things are going well, things generate and uh, the surges start to come and uh, away you go. Very difficult stop. That try by former Welsh skipper David Pickering was the ninth of the game and it brought up Neath's 1,000th point for the season. But they weren't finished there. Pickering had scored two and flanker Gerald Williams decided that anything he could do, he could match it. And there was more to come as the Neath 8 disrupted and Abervale put in on their own line and winger Alan Edmonds grabbed his 21st try of the season to make the final score Neath 58, Abervale 3. But the abiding memory is of Neath flanker Lynn Jones who decided to take over the role of Abervale's outside half and referee John Groves had no option but to penalise him. However, Abervale at the Knoll is one thing, Llanelliot Stradi Park next week will be totally different.